The specialization of one track event is something you will rarely, rarely find in an athlete. You look at just about all the greats, and they normally display their dominance in at least two events. The 100-200 Titans, the 5K-10K Distance Fiends, these athletes have shown they have what it takes to dominate an entire subsection of the sport, and the ones who enhance their portfolio even more than this are among the best to ever live. What happens though, when an athlete chooses to hyper-focus on an event so much, that it results in a level of perfection never seen before, and would push the time in their event to a point where no one would seem to come close to it ever again. This is the story of how David Rudisha became the undisputed king of the 800 meters. Born in the Transmara district of Kenya, David Lakuta Rudisha was brought into a world that was known for producing middle distance talent. Athletes like Billy Conchella, Patrick Conchella, and Stephen Murray were among the few that represented this small area of the iconic Rift Valley province, a section of Kenya home to plenty of the world's best athletes. In 2004, a young Rudisha was spotted running a 200-meter race at a school meet by a man named Como Connell. He wasn't exactly your ordinary coach though, as many consider him to be the godfather of Kenyan running. When he saw potential in Rudisha from a simple 200 meter race, where he finished fifth out of all things, it was clear Okano saw a level of untapped potential no one quite recognized at this point in time. It wouldn't be until 2005 where he spotted Rudisha again, but this time attempting a decathlon. But the more standout time in this case was a sub 5400 meters a mark that actually gives a hefty amount of points, even at the elite level. Another realization that struck O'Connell was that Rudisha's talent does trace back to a reliable man. More specifically, his father Daniel Rudisha, a 400-meter specialist who aided in getting Kenya a 4x4 silver medal at the 1968 Olympics. O'Connell would eventually get Rudisha to train at his camp for a couple weeks, but instead of running a 400, he would be thrown into an 8 instead. To O'Connell's surprise, he broke 150, and a couple months later would win the Kenyan Youth Championship Trials in June. By August, Rudisha had made the difficult decision to move hundreds of kilometers away from home and to train with O'Connell with the ambition of becoming one of the greats. In 2006, his first race of the season wouldn't occur until as late as July, but he would be thrown into a meet in Nairobi among some of Kenya's finest. If you were to guess his season opener would be under 150, you would definitely be correct. But 146.3 was an otherworldly improvement in time to make, nearly running a full 5 second personal best. He would then run at the Kenyan World Junior Trials, and would play second to qualify for the World Junior Championships held in Beijing. Making it through the first two rounds handily, the final would be fairly tactical coming through 400 meters in 54-34. At 600, the pack tries to pull away from Rudisha, but he makes a fantastic move on the outside, putting his massive stride to work, and ultimately comes down the straightaway to pull off his first ever international title for his international meet debut. A world junior title this quickly into Rudisha's running career would immediately pivot him towards the professional environment. 2007 was essentially a test tour to see what Rudisha could truly do when he's consistently put up against not just the world's best within his age group, but throughout the entire 800 meter landscape. In his professional debut, Rudisha would place 6th in Doha, and would run a big PR running 145.63. Little did people know that the teenage prodigy would not lose a single race for the rest of 2007, 
as he would win in Malmo, Lausanne, Zurich, and Brussels, where he'd end his season with a 144.15, quickly climbing the ranks on the all-time list just below the top 100. 2008 would open the door to an Olympic debut, and Rudisha's early season looked great, running in the 144s every single final he could, and even breaking that barrier for the first time in Oslo, where he'd snag a 143.72. Unfortunately, a calf strain would halt his racing by mid to late June, and it would be announced in Kenya media that Rudisha would be not competing at the Olympics as a result. Next year thankfully brought the supplementary but just as competitive world championships in Berlin that was scheduled for late August. With a return to competition in early May, Rudisha looked better than ever as early as his second race, running 143.53 in Hungary and a low 144 in Ostrava. He would play it a bit safer leading up to the trials this year though, as he'd wait a full month in between the Kenyan Championships and the trials to prepare. After winning both of them handily, Rudisha was on his way to Berlin to make his country proud, and with a 143.53 PR going in, making it to the finals surely shouldn't be too much of an issue for him. He's in the front at the moment, here comes Rudisha, Lopez trying to get there, Gary Reid trying to get there. Rudisha struggling, it's only the top two, Lalu stolen this, Rudisha's faltering at the end and Lopez gets the second spot. Two winners there, Lalu and Lopez will go to a final uh, whose lineup looks very different to that which I think most of us were expecting. Despite a solid surge down the home stretch, Rudisha stumbled just meters before the line, forfeiting his ticket to the finals and would have to go home without a proper chance at a medal. In all fairness, even making it this far at this age was a phenomenal feat to pull off, and it was obvious the Kenyan's future would be in full colors by the time he has a few more years of professional development under him. However, Rudisha wanted to show that his time in Berlin was actually a fluke, because just a couple weeks later in Rieti, he would register a time that was not only a massive personal best, but was also actually one of the best 800 meter performances ever done. La meilleure performance mondiale, un dernier tour en 52, 1 42.01. .01. .01. A mark that would put him at number 4 on the all time list and was the fastest time ever seen in the last 12 years. From not even being ranked in the top 100 to now becoming the fastest two lap runner in the last decade within a couple months was an unfathomable improvement arc that shocked the track and field world. As long as Rudisha could stay healthy, there really was no reason to suspect that he could break 142 soon, win a world championship, or better yet, threaten the world record set by Wilson Kipketer back in 1997. Still being so young though, there were likely plenty of steps to make before the latter can even be considered. So for now, Rudisha wanted to brush up on any potential weaknesses and stay fresh to prepare for the next World Championships held in Korea. 2010 was one of those transitional years where no international championships would be held, but this did not stop Rudisha from hopping into any race he could get his hands on, as he'd be stepping on the line as early as March to get any and all training in. In Oslo, he would be taken through the first 400 in 48.97, but this aggressive opener would unfortunately not be enough to break 142, but was almost as close as he could possibly be yet again. Not even a full 48 hours after his win in Lausanne, Rudisha went for the sub-142 again in Belgium, where he'd come through the 400 a tad more diligently in 49.11. In this case, his strength would pull through much more prominently, 
as not only did he finally run in the 141s, but went as far as to go half a second under 142. After grabbing his first ever African title, Rudisha took his longest break from racing by far that year, but would return to Berlin in late August. With a 48.65 first lap, this was one of Rudisha's fastest openers ever, and at 600, they were at 114.54. A sub-27 closer in a race like this is nearly an impossible feat, but as the crowd watched the clock with 100 to go, they slowly realized that this wasn't just a personal best for Rudisha, but rather the greatest 800 meters ever run. One forty one oh nine would be the time to dethrone the previous record of Wilson Kipketer, a mark thought to be barely unbreakable due to how far ahead of its time it was. But Rudisha had now overtaken the throne of being the new king of the 800 meter record. The fact that Rudisha still hadn't obtained a senior title of any kind yet was pretty insane to think about, but 2011 would finally be his chance to do so, and to also set a proper precedent for the 2012 Olympics held in London. Everyone knew he was the man to watch by the time these games were held, but what exactly was he capable of pulling off in the meantime? Well, let's find out. Performances at sub 142 that uh, really make him the greatest 800 meter runner of all time thus far. Well, only one other man has gone far. Here we are at the gorgeous London Stadium. After a world championship title in South Korea, blazing fast times across the board, this was Rudisha's opportunity to show not just track and field fans, but the entire world on how the 800 meters should be run. His races leading up to the Olympics were his best early season races to date, as these three times alone would be top 5 all-time marks, so to say he was in prime form would be an understatement. This was further reinforced where, during the heats, he ran perhaps the easiest looking 145 you'll ever see. What was even scarier was during the semis, where he made his 144 look just as easy, while the rest of the field was fighting for dear life as they tried to grab the other qualifying spots. The finals entries weren't exactly light work though, as quite a few of them had gone into this event with 143s this year, so an off day from Rudisha followed by an on day from any rival could create a unique competitive concoction. A brisk 23.5 for the 200 meter mark is obviously led by Rudisha, and he continues to front run through the first 400 with a 49.28. Unlike most championship races though, 
The pace does not let up at this point in the slightest, as by the time they're approaching the 600 mark, the next 200 is only a tad slower, as a 114.3 set the tone for a potential world record, because at this point, everyone knew Rudisha had the gold medal in the bag. They were simply more concerned now with just how fast he would run, and as the crowd deafened the London arena with raw excitement and curiosity, Rudisha would officially put the event to rest with a staggering mark that will never be forgotten. The 141 barrier was no longer in existence. 140.91 was the time that spoke volumes about Rudisha's pure dominance in the event and was the single greatest display of middle distance mastery seen in the last couple decades. The effortless stride, the one of a kind speed, not only was this such a theatrical way to win his first ever Olympic medal, but nearly the entire field had run out of their minds too just behind Rudisha. Big personal best on almost every front, a couple national records, a national junior record, this was the greatest 800 meter race to grace any track. Rudisha obviously had another full Olympic cycle in him to join the elite above elites to pull off the double gold, but when 2013 rolled around, things would start to turn a bit sour for the Kenyan star. He would run an open four to get the legs ready for his Diamond League tour, and while he looked to be in fine form with back-to-back -back wins, no one would hear from Rudisha in quite a while. By the time July came, fans would become increasingly worried about his athletic health, and in mid-July, articles would surface that Rudisha's 2013 season would end due to a knee injury, and that he would not be returning to defend his title at the World Championships. The recovery time was noted to be quite long, but assuming everything goes to plan, he should be back to racing by the 2014 season. Thankfully for Rudisha, this non-championship year was the perfect time frame to properly ease back into competition without the pressure of needing to be ready by a certain date. His performances were generally fine, all things considered, but certainly not the Rudisha we saw back in the early 2010s. The only major championship race he'd partake in was the Commonwealth Games, but he would end up losing to silver medalist Nigel Amos to take the silver in the event himself. It was certainly a strange feeling seeing Rudisha only win a couple races throughout an entire season, but by 2015, Surely he'd be back to full form, right? Not exactly. Rudisha opened up his 2015 season with three back-to-back -back wins, but in his next two races, he would be outkicked by Amos on two more occasions. What was even more concerning was at the Kenyan World Championship Trials, he hadn't even won that either, losing to Ferguson Rodich to take second. Nevertheless, Rudisha had returned to the World Championships for the first time in four years, so fans were curious to see if the rust had finally washed off, and that Amos wouldn't retain his number at yet another race. In an awkward turn of events though, the two would actually meet as early as the semis, which means that if they didn't go 1-2 at the finish, someone was likely going home. Rudisha leads the pack as usual where it's a fairly conservative first half, and by 600, he's more than in control to bring it home for a finals qualifier. Amos, on the other hand, has quite a bit of ground to make up in the last 100, and while it looks like he made up more than enough to join Rudisha alongside, his already tired form would completely falter at the last possible second, and would lose the automatic qualifier spot in the process. Since the other heats were all so much faster, 
there was zero chance Amos could grab a time qualifier, and he would devastatingly go home without the chance to even contest the Olympic champion, despite his recent record against him. Even though Rudisha was still the favorite given his resume, he wasn't exactly the fastest person this year going into the finals, nor was he the second, the third. Rudisha had barely made the top 10 in the season list. If this race was anything like the 2012 Olympics, serious troubles could arise for the Kenyan. Thankfully, it's a controlled start at the 200 and is just as tactical through 400 at 54.15. No one seemed to want to contest Rudisha as he was the one who led them through at such a slow pace to begin with. And at 121.50, the last 200 was undoubtedly going to be quick. His teammate Rodic is with him the whole time, but as he fades on the final stretch and with no one to suitably replace him, it would be Rudisha to pull out all the stops yet again to take his second World Championship title. This was not only a huge relief to him, but also to everyone who was wondering what precedent he'd set going into the 2016 Rio Olympics. Despite winning a world title just half a year ago, his road to Rio was surprisingly more unsettling than his quest to Beijing. At his first Diamond League race, he placed fifth in Shanghai, and then placed fourth in Stockholm with pretty mediocre marks. What was even more concerning was despite him running his fastest time in well over a year, in the heats of the Kenyan Olympic trials, this would almost backfire entirely in the finals. As in the last 100 meters, Rudisha just barely squeezes out a third and is the last of the Kenyans to make the team. Up until this point, Rudisha had only raced one more time after the trials, where he ran 143.35 in Hungary. He's passed the heats like nothing, but Amos, one of the favorites to win it all, and Rudisha's rival, was out of another international competition yet again, as he would place almost a dead last in what would end up being an incredibly tactical heat. Rudisha makes his semis heat look even easier, well away from the rest of the field, and wins it in a high 143 to put himself in the finals yet again. The biggest threats in the finals this year were French runner Pierre Umbois Bus, trials winner Alfred Kipketer, and 2012 Olympic gold medalist in the 1500, Algerian runner Taufik Maklouffi. It's an honest to start within the first 150, but as soon as everyone is bunched up, one athlete makes an incredibly unorthodox move just after the 200. It turns out to be Kipketer who storms away to gap Rudisha and everyone else because the last thing he wants is yet another tactical showdown and riskily comes through the 400 at 49.23. Unfortunately, this plan backfires pretty harshly as Kipketer lets Rudisha and the rest of the field back into the mix but it's still the fast race Kipketer likely wanted. As the initial aggressor, though, fades within another 100 meters, Rudisha, on the other hand, looks to be back in his element, front running like the champion he's always been known for doing, and with a clear shot around the bend with no one contesting in sight, he pulls off the elusive and legendary double Olympic gold medal as a result. down as one of the greatest of all time. Despite the last couple years being shaky on paper, and despite the inconsistent performances at Diamond League race after another, Rudisha knew when to make it count and would pull off the first double Olympic gold in the 800 since Peter Snell back in the 1960s. Even though everyone had cemented him as the best to ever do it in this event, this gold medal was the cherry on top that would finally put to rest the anxiety of those that worried of whether or not he'd be able to fulfill this one and final goal. The reason why this was likely his final goal 
is because after his race in Berlin in 2016, Rudisha's career and really his life would end up taking a harsh turn for the worse. Rudisha started up his 2017 season with a few races, but by late July, it was announced that he would be forfeiting yet another world championship opportunity due to a quad strain. This was just the beginning of what would be a domino effect of tragic events, as in 2018 he was still injured and would also lose his father, and in 2019 he survived a head-on collision with a bus with miraculously no injuries. He had also come public about struggling with alcoholism during this time frame as a result of these compounding events. But a glimmer of hope would spark when he announced he was back to training again in December 2019. Sadly, this opportunity was shot down quickly due to the pandemic, so up until that point, Rudisha had yet to step on the track again. Even though he would receive surgery on his ankle from training down the line from another injury, Rudisha had still not returned to the competitive scene, and in 2022, would survive another vehicle crash where he sustained minor injuries. Despite such harsh luck and grief within the past five years, he would finally get some sense of relief, as Rudisha would involve himself in the sport again, being appointed as an ambassador for the 2023 World Championships held in Budapest. David Rudisha's legacy is one that touches the hearts of many, a legacy filled with unbelievable 800-meter performance after another, and was an absolute phenom of showing up when it mattered the most, no matter what setbacks he faced, and no matter how he was racing beforehand. As long as he was at the line in the final, there was no question he would come out on top with not a single other athlete in sight. Even though injuries would muddy a great deal of world title opportunities and cut his career short, he still made sure he got that double Olympic gold, multiple world record drops, and a time that stands tall as one of the most prolific performances in track and field history. The future for this event nowadays is a bit worrying though, as breaking 143 is now seen as a rarity. This begs the question then, will we ever see another Rudisha? The logical answer is yes, as generational talent has spanned for centuries now, and someone likely will take the throne at some point. Until then though, the smooth strided, blistering fast, and humble Kenyan will remain to be the undisputed king of the two lap event, and will forever be remembered for his infectious contributions to the sport as a whole. This has been the story of David Rudisha, and thanks for watching. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel, and if you want to support the channel for more track and field content like this, come on over and become a patron. Drop a sub, and check out my other links below. I'll see you on whatever video I upload next, and take care.